Hello and welcome to the with me, Winner NJ, to another video of Weekly NJ, in which this week I only got Nier Automata that I'm going to be talking about since that finally ended. After like um, five, six months of days. The, well, the last delay was like five or six months, considering it did have another delay that I remember, I think. After that, like the first two or three episodes. But yeah, finally got the last four episodes this week, and um, yeah. First part of the anime finished. We just gotta wait for the second one now. But, um, yeah, I haven't really ever really played the game, so I don't really know what all has been changed when it comes to the story. But I do know that parts of the story have been changed and stuff, and it's basically the reason why you got the 1.1a in the title for the anime. But, um, overall for it, this anime, I would say it is decent, but I probably would have enjoyed it more if it wasn't for all the delays. Considering having it where you got the first few episodes and then like an entire, had to wait an entire month for any more episodes, kind of really took away some of the enjoyment. And then you get to the eighth episode and then we gotta wait half a year basically for the last four episodes. It's like, it's kind of hard to enjoy at that point. But, um, yeah, just got to wait for part two whenever that's going to be airing and just hope that it's not riddled. Just get riddled with delays as well. Yeah, but that was the anime. So moving on to the next thing, which is Lessons in Love. I didn't actually realize this thing got updated for the public last week. So yeah, got around to it this week. Version 32 with two main events, four events for EO, and then three events for... Yatsu, Haruka, Maki, and Nao. In which, most, for the most part, went in order, I actually did them. It does kind of just group all the characters' events together, and that's pretty much the order I did it. Main event, three EO events. Then you got uh, Maki and Haruka's events, which basically are all grouped together. Because four of them are chained together, basically. And then, main event, three for now, and then EO again, and then Yatsu's three events. But, uh, yeah, started off picking off where the last update ended with the whole little conflict between Ami, Maya, and INA there, from them apparently calling each other and inviting them to different locations. In which, in the morning, Maya and INA show up, and um, Maya and Ami, at the very least, are in the beginning into an argument, considering the fact that um, INA kind of seems a bit scared of Ami after learning from Maya the kind of things that Ami's done before. Yeah, makes sense, to be honest. But once Sensei wakes up, he manages to spit an end to that whole argument, and once Maya and INA leave, Sensei confronts Ami again about her overprotective behavior and everything, in which she basically seems to do a complete 180 from what she was doing before, and is now completely okay with Sensei wanting more space for himself. Yeah, that's just kind of come out of nowhere. Why in the world should... Did Ami just do a complete 180? No idea. But, yeah. I don't exactly trust Ami, but, yeah. Um, EO's events. First one, yeah, basically, first two, actually, I think. Since he goes spend some time with EO and during all the talking and everything, EO kind of tells Sensei that she has no interest in a physical relationship, which leads to her also telling about the whole idea she had for their relationship of his to work, which would involve Uta. Yeah, that's the only real thing I can really say think was important with that whole conversation, was the whole, those two things, basically. But next one is Eo is bringing food to Yuki's apartment, but it runs into Yumi instead. Which leads to Yumi inviting her in, and they kind of have a bit of a talk. And I 
guess kind of realize how similar they are, though, after Yumi kind of goes through telling her backstory and how she ended up the way she currently is, Io just laughs it off. Because apparently, Yumi's had it so much easier compared to her. And yeah. Got to that point, I started trying to connect dots in my head, and I kind of think I may have some ideas of what's happened to Eo in the past. That's made her the way she currently is. I got some ideas. But, uh, yeah, Mackie and Tarika's events. Well, yeah. Mackie isn't horny anymore. So Haruka kind of puts together a little vacation to try and help her, which it doesn't. That's basically like three of the events covered right there already. But um, afterwards, Maki asks talk with Sensei and kind of tells her the reason why she isn't horny anymore, which is because Makoto's mood has improved so quickly after her father passed away. So yeah, she figures it out how that's due to to the fact that she's having sex, and Maki just doesn't really know how to deal with that, and acts Sensei for advice, which he eventually just tells her to talk to Makato about it. And then the next morning, y'all head back, and after Maki leaves, Sensei tells Haruka why Maki isn't horny anymore, and she quickly realizes that Sensei is basically one of at fault for all the darn stuff. And also kind of goes on a bit about how horrible of a person Sensei is, which wasn't convincing in the slightest, especially considering what her next event is. In which Haruka asks Sensei to corrupt her because apparently with this whole reformation that she's kind of going through, she's accepted how bad of a person she is and came to the conclusion that if she's going to be bad, she may as well be as bad as she possibly can be. Just something like that. So she completely offers herself to Sensei, basically letting him be, letting herself be a sex slave for him, and wants Sensei to corrupt her so she can at least get a taste of the life Sensei is living. Yeah, that whole thing there... Came out of nowhere for me. I did not expect it in the slightest. Seriously? No idea where the fuck that came from. I guess there were maybe some hints, but I really didn't expect the text to go in this direction. But, um, yeah. Main events there. That was next was Dorm Wars parents, because it's apparently time for another Dorm Wars to start. So, yeah, it's being tied to the beach trip this time. So, yeah, Makoto and Uta have already started preparing the next Storm Wars. We know all the contests, though I kind of lost track of all those while I was going through that event, so I don't really know what's what when it comes to contests, but, yeah. I just know that some of the contests are quite one-sided, like a building event between Io and Miku. It's like, that's completely one-sided from Eo. She has a complete advantage in that. She's the builder. But, um, yeah. With that stuff, it's time for now. See, fans, you know, it's since Sensei wakes up to Ami telling him that there's a random girl there to visit him, which, of course, Mao-chan, who is apparently there because Kauri is going to be working longer or something and wants, doesn't want her sitting in the apartment the entire day by herself, so yeah. She left sin now in Sensei's care, with some questionable things on the notepad and everything, like the sit on me being babysitting in Calories language. So yeah. Sensei now has to babysit now for the entire day and also get her some new clothes, considering that's one of the things he really needs to do. But um yeah. Ami very quickly warms up to now, and also notices the colors of her eyes, of Nao's eyes, are being being the same as hers and Maya's. Seriously want an explanation on that, but I don't think we're going to be getting it for some time. But, um, yeah. When and Sensei brings Nao to the mall to get her some clothes, she, he of course goes straight to Chica. In which, by the time they leave, Sheik is basically wanting to adopt now. 
Despite the fact that she already has to take care of Chinami. Yeah. And then Sensei goes take now to Tojo Ramen to eat, yeah, which of course, Sineo is there, but also Noriko. And to all Sineo, Sineo is basically getting food for now and everything, since they and Noriko have a bit of a talk and stuff. And once now finishes food, they, he of course takes her back to the apartment and stuff, but um, yeah. Everyone's warming up to now very quickly, despite the fact that they're kind of always bit put off initially. Probably because she's with Sensei. But yeah. Next one, Eo's hit. Yeah, her final one, which Sensei actually lectures Eo a bit about whole giving Miku medications and stuff, but he eventually stops after realizing how much she cares about Miku. But, uh, yeah. Eo really shouldn't be doing that, to be honest. But, eh, Sensei's not a very responsible adult, so can't expect him to not back down after a while. But, uh, yeah. But time for Yatsu's events, which, um... I think I'm basically skip over the second event entirely, but yeah. First one, since it goes to see Yatsu at the cathedral, which of course Yatsu being Yatsu kind of starts going on about her god and also kind of says that the reason why we only have summer and winter is because spring and fall have been taken away by other forces, which I think during all that, she might actually be foreshadowing that one of those two may be coming back in the next three sets, which considering how the game works, my guess would be fall. Considering we basically always have the beat each update in the summer, we always get the Halloween update around Halloween, you always get a Christmas update around Christmas, so yeah. I'd expect if they were going to be getting a reset soon, is going to be going to fall, which will just completely destroy Maya's world and how she thinks everything's works, considering this never happened before and stuff, but yeah. But another thing, um, since uh, Yatsu also tells Sensei that he's kind of running out of time to choose and invites him to join her and sit down next to her and stuff, and uh, Sensei reminds her that she doesn't believe in God and stuff, but still decides to sit next to her and stuff, so yeah. I guess Sensei's technically chosen his eye now. But uh, final event, Sensei goes to the dorm to see Yatsu, which of course is answered by Stoka instead, and has a little conversation with Toki about Yatsu and the things he sees when he's with her and stuff. But that abruptly ends and gets replaced by a flashback to Yatsu's past with her at a clinic, with her mother arguing with a doctor who's saying that Yatsu just has, has schizophrenia. So yeah, when Yatsu's flashback eventually ends, she still thinks she's in a doctor's office and stuff, and um, yeah. Toka gets Sensei to leave, considering Yatsu starts undressing and stuff, and yeah. After Sensei leaves, Yatsu says something which makes Toka realize that Yatsu was kind of taken advantage of in the past. Yeah, I'm kind of pretty sure at this point that something bad has happened to every single character in the past, whether it's being taken advantage of, or family dying or something like that in the past. But yeah, I'm pretty sure every character's had something like that happen to them. But uh, yeah, that's all that stuff covered for Lessons in Love. Next update is going to be the Dormore speech trip going by little teasers I've already seen for the next one. Which I think is going to be released at the beginning of next month. So, maybe halfway through August I'll be able to play that or something when it goes public, I think. Not exactly sure. But, um, yeah. That update may end with a reset, I'm not exactly sure. Could. Really not sure, though. But, um, yeah. Charles and Tainted Space are still haven't gotten to Vitoan there. Just gone back to 
Tavos cards to considering I got stuff there that I can now do now after I finished the Marillion. But I also kind of, when I was leaving, Marillion wanted to do the Kashima incident, so I had to kind of turn on the go to the cheats, turn on Halloween events basically, so I could actually get that events considering the 0.25% chance to get it with the when it's not Halloween. 25% chance of getting it when it is Halloween. So yeah, I had to turn that on so I could actually get it easily. And due to that, I had got a bunch of other Halloween stuff that came up as well, so I altered all that. So I got a lot of the Halloween stuff done, kind of. But uh, yeah, cash my incident done, did some other stuff on Minga, and... Went to Tarvos, kind of started doing some stuff there, and I plan on trying to get as much of that stuff done that I'm now able to do before we're heading to Uvito. So, yeah. I don't think I really have anything else to talk about, besides the fact that my videos for this Czech Republic series I'm doing on Age of History 2 is doing weird. First and third episode haven't really done very well, but the second and fourth episode are doing very well. For God's sake's fourth episode, 100 impressions after being gay uploaded for eight hours. And then it just all of a sudden started just skyrocketing in when it comes to impressions, which of course resulted in tons of views as well. Yeah, no idea on why the world caused that, to be honest. Seriously. At times, I think I kind of get a bit of a sleep, at least a slight understanding of YouTube's algorithm. But at times like this, I just don't understand it at all. Seriously, I don't know why the video is doing so well all of a sudden. But, yeah, good I guess. Did not expect the fourth episode to do so well, considering I basically was doing nothing for half the damn thing. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. That's going to be the end of this video. I don't really have anything else to talk about. So, yeah, that there is the end of this video. I hope you all enjoyed it, and I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.